welcome to JustMakeGames.com. Uh, in this video, we're going to be showing you the basics of the flow graph system. Um, I know the flow graph can be kind of daunting for those that have never tried to use a visual scripting system before, but uh, hopefully after this, you'll at least have a decent idea of where to start. First off, in order to open the flow graph editor, you need to open up your engine and load up a level, and then come up here to View, then Open View Pane, and then move down to flow graph. This is going to open up the flow graph editor. Now you're not going to be able to do anything in here right off the bat. You need to actually create a new flow graph. So to do that, you're going to want to come up here to file and then new. And what's going to do is this is going to pop a new file right down here in your tree. And then it might be hard to see on this video, but there's a grid here. I'll zoom in and you can kind of see it. Uh, if you see that grid, you know you've got one loaded. Um, the the probably the most important nodes that you're going to end up using I'll cover first. Uh, first off, you're going to want to right click anywhere in the graph and then hit Add Node. It's going to give you a list of all uh, different groups that you could pick from. The first one we're going to start off with is going to be in the miscellaneous section and it's going to be Start. This here uh, is going to be probably used in most of your flow graphs. Uh, it pretty much initializes your flow graph at the start of the level. But uh, we'll, we'll get a little bit more into that. I'm going to go ahead and pull up the rest of the probably the more important nodes here. You also have your input, which is key. Uh, for any keys on the keyboard or anything that's pressed, you can set in here uh, to do different functions. You're going to have HUD display debug message. This is really helpful for testing out whenever you're having problems with a flow graph and you can't figure out why it's not working. This here will at least let you see what kind of output you're getting. Um, the next one is what's called local player. All right, here under game. And then uh, the next one is probably one of the more important ones as well, is under system and console variable. Uh, if you don't know what a console variable is, uh, we'll go ahead and cover that under a little bit more in depth under a, a different tutorial. But basically it's just variables that you could set up inside of the engine to change how the whole system operates. Um, you'll notice that on each one of these nodes that there's a color and there's no there's entries on the left and right of the node. The colors denote what kind of information they're going to be passing. You'll see here on the green. A green is for string. It's as you can see as I mouse over it says any. Uh, a string could be pretty much any type of information that's passed. Uh, it'd be text, number, it doesn't matter. Uh, you'll see these white. Uh, that's called that's what's called a float. That could be any number at all, whether it be two, two point five, three, eight, it doesn't matter. You'll see that there's a red one, and that is just going to display integers or, or whole numbers. Uh, pretty much no fractional value. It's only going to be one, negative one, zero, one, two, three, four, and so on. Uh, the blue is only going to be putting out in a boolean. Uh, if you know, depending on how much you know about computers, that's either going to be a one or a zero, or a true and a false. Uh, there's some others that aren't listed here. Well, uh, there is a uh, purple, and it's called a VEC3, or a vector. Uh, that's pretty much just a combination of three float values. Um, it can be used to denote color, such as it is here, or the three positional points in a 3D space, uh, you know, according to the X, Y, and Z axis. Uh, used mostly when it comes to uh, moving an entity, uh, or, or any type of motion or rotation. Um, We'll go ahead and get started. Uh, we'll make a very, very simple flow graph here. Let's go ahead and get rid of some of these. Uh, to get rid of a, f a node that you've placed on there, you could just right click on it. Make sure it turns white because I can right click on it without clicking on it first and hit delete and nothing happens. You have to click on it once to turn it white and then hit delete. First off, what we're going to do is I'm going to show you how to display your ammo as well as your zoom. So we're going to go to add node, then to game, and then weapon sensor. 
Now, I mean, there's a lot of nodes in here that you could play with, and obviously I can't cover them all in this video, but we'll, we'll probably end up covering them in future videos. But first off, here's the weapon sensor. As you can see, it has all different kinds of outputs, and it can do various, various functions here. Uh, you'll notice on a lot of these nodes, it's going to say choose entity. Uh, that's the entity or the object inside the game that you're going to be referencing, or this node is referencing. Uh, this game local player uh, is pretty much a node that always references your character or the character you're controlling inside the game. So in order to link the two, you're going to hit Entity ID, you're going to drag an arrow from it, hold down the left mouse button, and then drag it over to Choose Entity. That way, even if your Entity ID changes uh, for the local player, it's still always going to track that entity or your character. Now we want to enable this, and we want it to have we want it to be enabled from the start of the level. So you're going to move this from output to enable. Now there's other ways to do this, but this is just a very simple one to kind of give you the basics of it. Um, and here we will move to ammo. It's, if you mouse over it and hold over it, it'll give you a, a small description of what each output does, and it tells you what kind of output, such as integer or boolean. Uh, this on this particular one we're going to be using ammo it's going to go to the message now like I was saying this display debug message it's not necessarily a good idea to actually want to use the same game but for this the, for the purpose of this tutorial we're going to use it uh, but like I said mainly it's very important whenever you're trying to troubleshoot whenever you're having problems with the flow graph that just quite isn't working correctly um, we want this debug message or the message to be displayed at the very beginning of the level when the level starts so you can drag more than one link from each output and we're going to put it to show here that pretty much means as soon as the level starts it's going to start showing this debug message as well as enable this weapon sensor node we're going to add another debug message node here and then enable that at level start now this here I hate this is just more of a personal thing. I hate whenever a link crosses over nodes. Um, it's not going to hurt anything, honestly, but it just kind of makes it hard to work with. Uh, then I'm going to move from the zoom mode here to message. Now, at so what the way this flow graph is set up currently, it's going to track the local player and their weapon. At game start, it's going to enable the weapon sensor node, which then is going to output the message here for the ammo, as well as how far in you're zoomed in. Now, as of right now, I've got the debug message displaying at the same spot on the screen. That's not good, or you're going to have overlapping characters. So I'm going to put this to 100 to drop the next message right below it. Now, if I try to do this, if I try to load up this flow graph right now, it's going to have some problems. And in fact, I will show you that right now. Move this over. As you can see, it doesn't really do much. Well, I'm going to die here. I should have probably moved myself closer to the ground. And as you can see, it doesn't display anything in the upper right hand corner. Until I start actually firing or until I zoom in now to fix that because you want it displayed from the get-go you're going to want to move another node into the fun into this flow graph here and this is another important one as it's used quite a bit as uh, a lot of, like for instance, the start is only going to output once at the very beginning of the level. It's not going to keep telling this to show over and over and over. But that's what this time time node is for. Uh, for every frame rate, it's going to tick out or send a send an output. And so at, on every frame rate, it's going to get all this info over and over and over on every frame. So now that I've done that, we'll load back into the level here. And as you can see, it starts it from the beginning. And as you fire, it shows you your ammo count. Or, as you're zoomed in, it'll show you 
well, it's not showing the zoom in. But that's <laughs> that's one of the problems with you'll run into with flow graphing. Sometimes it just doesn't work the way you want it to. I happen to know why this isn't working. It's because I linked the wrong part here, the weapon node. Um, but this is going to be a good example for me to show you how to edit links. If you notice on these links right here, there's a circle in the middle of each one. If you try to click anywhere on the link, it's not going to really do much for you until you click on the circle and you want to hit remove. This is how you would get rid of a link. There are other ways such as right clicking on the node, selecting outputs, and delete links, but what that's going to do is it's going to delete all of the links off the output of the node or the input. And uh, if you've got, say, this ammo moving to 40 different nodes, that could be painful to say the least. Um, the step I should have taken it from was current zoom step to message. And then if we hop back in the game here, and I move to my Binox, now you see that bottom number is going to show at what level I'm zoomed in. Now that's just a very basic flow graph and it's not something that you would want necessarily want to use in a actual production game, but you know, it gives you kind of the basics here. Now there are a lot of options that you have whenever you're working with these, such as I showed you before. Um, whenever you right click on a node, you can delete the links directly. You can uh, also copy an entire section of nodes. Um, for this particular tutorial we're not going to have a use for it but you may want to copy the whole thing and then you have two sh options here you can paste which will paste the whole s whole thing here but without any links or you can right click and hit paste with links and it'll actually put all the links in that you had before when you copied now as for the tabletop that you have here as you can see you can zoom way out um, if there is a limit to the flow graph and how many flow nodes that you could put in here, I honestly have not found one. Um, but having too big of a flow graph, uh, while it's while you can do it, it's not very it's not very feasible. You once you have so many thousands of nodes on here, it gets very very painful to try to go through and find the exact place uh, or node that you're looking for to fix something. But one thing that's going to help out with that is you can add comments. You can add a simple comment here. And move those around. And then you put these with groups of nodes. Uh, that way you can kind of keep track of what, little, what groups do what. Um, now, personally, I honestly feel that you, you can have as big of a flow graph as you want, but have just a single script or a single function uh, for each flow graph that you make. For instance, if you have a flow graph made for your HUD, just have that fl just have the nodes that affect the HUD in that flow graph and nothing else. You can go through and make multiples here. I'll show you here. I'm going to open up one that I made a while back. It's not going to be fully operational as I don't have everything in the level, but it, it will be good at an example. Here is a flow graph that I had made to set up pretty much a real-time strategy camera. It works okay, but as you can see, now I have two flow graphs down here. Um, a lot of times whenever you're wanting to write a flow graph for a specific function, uh, say as such the camera movement, uh, you're going to create a node or you're going to create a flow graph and it's not going to work out all that great. So what you're going to want to do is right click disable because you don't want to get rid of it. You may want to re refer back to it to see where you messed up and then create a new one here and then start working from the new one. You can even copy. and paste between flow graphs. So if most of the flow graph that you were working with was good, just there was a, a couple parts that you wanted to mess up on and wanted to try out a new flow graph without changing much on this one, then you could do that. And you can copy and paste all the nodes and links between them pretty nicely. Um, 
this is pretty much the end of just the very basics here. Uh, we'll go ahead and get it started in uh, some more in-depth flow graph and scripting uh, as, as the time goes on. Uh, go ahead and send in some more requests uh, of what you would like to learn. In fact, there is a contest on Just Make Games right now uh, of, of giving away a set of 10 indie games for just telling us what you want to learn. Um, we'll go ahead and pick the 10 best entries and then give away games. Uh, my name's Puddin, and I hope you enjoyed this.